In this video, we're going to focus on how we can shrink the pie chart, make sure it's smaller than the standard size it has. So we want to shrink it, let's say 20%, 50% or more. You can control it all. We're going to explore how to do that. So to do this, the first thing what we need is our border template, which you can find here on chartjs3.com. Getting started, once you're on here, scroll down and copy this chunk of code and you're good to go. Next, if you want to have the source code of this video and many others, check out my Patreon page. And of course, got a question, put it on Discord. All the links are in the description box. So the first thing that we're going to do here is we want to convert this first into a nice pie chart. So to shrink this, we want to first have a pie chart that we can shrink, save, refresh, there we are. So now we have this, and you can imagine if we would have labels at the very outer part here, we would like to shrink this so it will not interfere. Of course, we will not have any labels in this video, but we want to have the ability to shrink this. And for that, I'm going to say a comma, I'm going to create a custom plugin for it. So it's a plugin and we can call this our scale chart. There we are. And once we have that, we're going to say here, constant scale chart, ID of that. And then we can say here, before the data set draws, well, before data sets draw, we will do chart, arts, and plugin options. And the main reason for this is we want to make sure that we first recalculate a specific part of it. I'll explain it later on. So once we have that, we're going to do an object destructuring of the chart object. So what we can do here is well, probably the CTX. I'm not even sure if we need that one, but just put it in there for, for now. I'm just going to say a CTX.save. Well, if we're going to use the CTX.save, then of course we will be needing this. So now what I want to do here then is start to look at what do we need exactly. Well, to be specific, we will need this outer radius. The outer radius here defines how far the line or the slice will be from the center, from the center all the way here up. So we can get this information very easy by doing console log. And then what I want to do here is uh, chart dot get data set meta, and this will be then index zero and then dot data, and then we get here the data point zero. If I do this, you'll see we'll get all the data from one specific data point index zero. In this case, that's this red slice. So once I do that one, you can see we're getting some information here. And what I would like to know here is the outer radius. So this means that it is now 333.5 pixels in length from this point all the way up or from this point anywhere on the outer radius. So let's change that. When we change this, so we can say here dot outer radius. And let's say this will be now 200. If I save this, refresh, now we have a smaller slice. So we can apply this on all of them here. So what we're going to do here is the following. We're going to grab uh, basically the item here, the data. We can say here data dot for each. And then we're going to say here for each, we can say here for every data point, we're going to get an index and then function our expression. And then we just say the following. We can say here from the data point dot outer radius equals 200, for example. Let's save that refresh. All right, so that works. However, this is not really what I want. I don't want it like that hard coded. I would like to have a scale on it so we can give it a scale. But you, you cannot do it like this. So if we say here the scale would be, let's create here a constant, say a scale equals 0 0.9. All right, so you might say if we just multiply this, say refresh, uh, does it work? I guess uh, 0.9, hold on. So, and of course, well, my bad here. So. This will work, of course, because we have a hard-coded number, but you can imagine we would like to just grab the outer radius. So we could say this outer radius here, put it in there, multiply by that, and then we get this very weird design. And of course, this one here right now is hard-coded as well. So if you want it in percentage, we need to do some adjustment. If you would like to have it in a, a absolute number, it's a different story. 
All right, but let's say we want to create a percentage. So we can say here the scale factor, and that will be 0 0.9. So how do we do this? Well, in this case, what we need to do is we need to reload the first time this specific value. So what I can do here, I'm going to say here, if, and I'm going to say here, uh, let's create a new item. We say here, if there is no chart dot, let's call the original outer radius. If there is none, we want to assign a value for that. And what it will be is basically this outer radius. So then we can say here, the chart dot outer radius equals that one. So once we have that, we could do here now a console on this specific value that we have created. Let's save that, refresh, open up the developer tab. Uh, reference on scale is of course not here anymore because we have a scale factor. There we are. So now you can see here this one maintains. So let's see if I can use this with our 0 0.9. That's making the value here of the scale factor. And you can see it will stay all the time. The reason why it shrinks is because of the animation that's been applied and it loads it 62 times. And that creates the issue. So now we have that as a static value basically. And that will help us. So what I'm going to do here, we can say, put it here, multiply by this, save. All right, that works. So now what I can do here, the scale factor, we can just say here, uh, the value would be this. Put it in there. There we are. So now we have this nicely adjusted. So let's do here 0 0.8, save. There we are. All right, so the last thing what I would like to do then is assign this value into here. So we have the options, we can make a plugin with it. And with this plugin, I'm going to use the name. Remember, we have the scale chart here or the scale factor. Well, let's call it the, that's the plugin name. So we're going to say in the scale chart, what I would like to do is I want to have here the scale factor. And the scale factor will be, let's say, um, whatever it is, let's say 0 0.7. What I need to do then is here the following. Scale factor should be equal to this here. How do we get that? Well, quite simple. We can just say your plugins. This plugins will know because of the ID of scale chart, so it will find the specific ID where it needs to be in here, or the name, namespace, and then we're going to say here scale factor. So we're going to say here dot that. And if there is none, we just say we'll keep it on 100%. Let's save this, refresh. All right, as you can see here, this works nicely. Let's say here 0 0.5 to make sure that we have a new value. There we are. Or we have nothing. What happens then? Back to its original state. And that's it.